Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this time of worship here at the Centerport United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Roy Grubbs, and alongside our music team today, Joe Ferrante, our music director, and Tom Murphy on saxophone. Thank you for coming, Tom, and being a part of our music today. And Gina Grubbs behind the camera. We welcome all of you to this message from God about a helping hand. Not only how God is a helping hand to us in times of crisis or in any time of need, maybe you experienced that this past week, but also how we can be a helping hand to others and, and pay that forward, if you will. And you probably did that this week, too. So let us center in on this message, a helping hand. Let us clear away any distractions that we have going on. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and be still. Just breathe out the weak storm, anything. Just breathe out. As you breathe in, let that be the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, how easy it is for us to shy away from being faithful. There is so much tumult in our lives, so much uncertainty. When you come to us in an opportunity, we are fearful and we cry out in resistance. When you call us forward to life, we see only the difficulties and trials in store for us. We forget that your hand is ever ready to save and preserve us. God, forgive us our fears and doubts and free us to walk boldly in faith. In the name of the one who leads us to life, we pray. Amen. And that one who leads us to life, Jesus the Christ, is the reason why we gather for worship in the first place. Life-giving, life-promising, life-everlasting, and one that comes with grace. Grace that is so needed for us personally, and grace that flows through us to others in the ways of mercy and compassion the ways of forgiveness and reconciliation. And with that, our music team has led us to our first hymn. It's called Amazing Grace. I'm sure you know it. Sing along with us. It's number 378 in our hymnal, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6.
amazing grace. How sweet the sound. And we are graced with so much in our life. Grace that comes before we're even aware, that helps us to wake up our eyes, gives us life, gives us hope. Grace is a huge word encompassing many other words, and it truly is amazing how we are graced every day. And sometimes we're graced with the gift of new life in a tangible way. It could be a new job, a new home. It could be a new relationship in our life, or it could even be the birth of a grandchild. And this rose is in honor of Anderson James, Robin Brennan's new grand, uh, grandson and son to Andrew and Helen out in Ohio. And so we give thanks for Anderson and for the life that he's already blessed that family with. The joy, the smiles, everyone's doing healthy, and we're so blessed uh, to give thanks for his life in this way. And I do want to say that Robin just happens to be here with us today, and so Robin, congratulations. That's wonderful. And as we continue our prayers, I just want to give thanks to Gina Groves behind the camera. You know, she's one of those unsung people, just typical, I'm in front of the camera, she's behind. That kind of describes how we are. She gets it all done and I just stand and try to look presentable. So I want to thank her, especially for our upcoming anniversary on Monday. It's going to be 29 years she's put up with me officially, so happy anniversary, honey, and uh, thank you for all that you're doing here. It's tremendous. And one of the things that she's helping us with is our Vacation Bible School that we're going to release this coming Monday. So if you go to our YouTube account, there'll be a playlist there offered, and it's all virtual. Each day it's about 45 or so minutes, and it's just a playlist where it's walking you through the entire school for that day. One for each day. So Monday the 10th will be day one, and Tuesday will be day two, and onward, all the way through Friday. Of course, these are going to be available all month. So you can do them in any way that you want, at any time you want, for the whole month. It's called Rocky Railway, and we're going to be on track with one another to find Jesus. And so we hope that you join us through YouTube. We're going to post it out on our Facebook account, and you can go to our website as well. And while you're there, check out all the other offerings that we have, and come join us and be a part. I also uh, heard today that one of our college students had headed back to school. And quite frankly, I know some of them are going back physically, and some of them are staying home for virtual. But in whatever case, we want to pray for the college students and the university itself in this uncertain time. And pray for our schooling systems. Tom is a high school teacher as well, teaches science. And so we pray as they are finding out how this year is going to be for them. We pray for the students, the faculty, for a year that's full of health and safety and education. God has a way for us to do this the best we can in these times, and so we're praying for, for all of you. So if you have a prayer on, on your heart today, go ahead and lift it up. I'm gonna invite us into a time of prayer and silence. Use that to lift it up to God. You can even say it out loud if you'd like. Let us pray. God, it's great to hear of new life and new opportunities and how you've carried us through this past week's storm, which was maybe even more powerful than we thought it was going to be, with effects that were long-lasting. Lord, we thank you that you've carried us through. Help us to help others who experience damage. Maybe we can be that helping hand that they need. Maybe even just a word of comfort and compassion or something tangible. Help us to reach out to all our neighbors who are your children. Lord, we thank you for the gift of new life, new education, new opportunities, and demarcations of new years beginning as they approach in the upcoming weeks and months. Lord, keep us safe in these days dealing with this virus and help us to communicate and reach out in the new ways you've provided. Thank you for our staff here at the church and keeping the ministry going and for all the opportunities that we are providing for folks to worship and learn and grow, even for our young people. Lord, help us to keep connected in ministry. That's what it's all about, to stay connected to you 
and to one another. That's what your son, Jesus, told us to do in so many different ways. And so it's now in the words that Jesus taught us to pray together, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So all those prayers that we lifted up, we offer them to God. Prayers of celebration and thanksgiving, and of course, prayers of concern. You may have some concerns on your hearts, too. I know we have many in our congregation who are experiencing recovering from surgeries, many who are experiencing times of loss and grief, those that are trying to figure out what's next for them after job opportunities have ended during these last several months. Times of uncertainty, a lack of, of vision of where we're going. There could be all kinds of prayer requests out there, and you have your own. So as we offer ourselves to God at this time when we give electronically or we're ready to offer financial resources to our church to keep our ministries going, we also offer our prayers, our hearts, and our souls to God. So I'm going to take a minute to let you continue your prayers of offering to God this morning. Gracious God, we admit that we spend a lot of energy trying to achieve greatness, trying to attain security. Help us to remember that true greatness and lasting security are simply the results of following you. As you continue to empty yourself again and again for us. In this time of offering, please help us to be a little emptier of our own strivings so that we can be much fuller of you. In your name we pray. Amen. And in this time of offering, we are really, in effect, kneeling down and saying, God, you are amazing. We worship you and we give you thanks for everything that you provide to us every single day. The ability to live, our breath, our food, our shelter, our clothing, our relationships, our places of employment the ability to celebrate, the ability to give to others everything you give us. And we offer a peace back to you. And really what we're saying is, God, you're amazing. You are so great. We can't say enough. We should be singing praises every minute of our lives. So this next hymn, How Great Thou Art, is only fitting for a time of offering, isn't it? It's number 77 in our hymnal. Together we'll sing verses 1, 2, and
Let us pray. Lord God, renew our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love through every word that comes from Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this next scripture reading, listen closely for Jesus' words to Peter and really to us and all others. Jesus and Peter on the water. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead on to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when Peter noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got back into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can you imagine? <laughs> a lot of you are boaters. Tom, I know you have a boat. And if you ever were to get caught out there in the middle of a storm, could you imagine being out on your boat and that tropical storm comes? Those waves must have been beating against any boat out there. That must be kind of scary, right? Absolutely. I mean, what are you going to do when waves are start, water is coming into the boat? You're frightened. They're out in the middle of a big sea. This is not just a little pond. And they're trying to go miles across, and they're caught by a storm all night long. Remember, it says, in the evening they left. And it's not till morning when Jesus comes. So it's hour after hour after hour on this boat, and they are petrified. They're not sure they're going to make it. And all of a sudden, walking through the wind and the waves on top of the water, comes this person, way out there in the distance. Who could it possibly be? It's got to be a ghost, right? How they forgot who they were following. And how they forgot, literally now halfway through this gospel, we're in chapter 14, Matthew's 28 chapters long. They've already had all of this teaching about who Jesus is. He's never going to let them go. But they forget not even expecting him to come, thinking there's no way they're going to be saved. But of course there's a way. But Peter, God love Peter, always testing, always wanting to be sure, to be rock solid, that Jesus, this is you, and I'm going to know it. So if it really is you, I'm going to test you, and let me walk to you in the middle of all of this. So Jesus says, okay, come on. Can you imagine taking that first step? Tom, I think the goal of a boat, right, is that you're staying in the water, safe from drowning and falling yes, in. That's, and, the that's kind of the plan, right? Yes. So taking a step in the middle of a huge windstorm like we had this past week and taking a step out, 
defies all human logic. But Peter does it. And after that first step, Scripture says he starts walking towards Jesus. Can you imagine? He's got his eyes fixed right on him. And while he's fixed on Jesus, everything else subsides. All the storms calm down. There is no storm. Everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. But for a moment, Peter starts looking away from Jesus. And the moment he does, oh my gosh, there's winds and there's waves. And what am I doing? And I can't be doing this. And this is crazy. And down he starts going. Of course you're going to cry out for help. How are you going to survive that? You're not going to. And Jesus immediately, immediately reaches out his hand and pulls him back up and gets him on the boat safely. Jesus is there to lend a helping hand when Peter needed it most, when he doubted and when he was about ready to drown. You ever feel like that? Maybe you felt like that this past week. Maybe you felt like that these past five months. Maybe you felt like that when you experienced a time of loss, or when you felt abandoned, or you felt alone, or you felt like there was no way out. Everything just cascading in, and you felt like you were drowning. How can I possibly be saved? Who can possibly save me from this? Notice how Jesus tells Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Not you of no faith, but you of little faith. See, adjacent to this story in the Bible is a story of a mustard seed. And Jesus said, if we have a mustard seed, and if you've ever seen a mustard seed, they're tiny. I think they're smaller than a pea. They're really small. When you plant this in the ground, it grows into this huge bush. It kind of looks like a tree. And this little tiny seed grows into this magnificent plant. Just from that. And Jesus says, you of little faith. It's not you of no faith. Because we wobble as people. We question. We doubt we don't see, we have finite vision. We don't have the infinite picture that God has. So we get nervous, we're frightened, we don't know our way. If we keep our eyes fixed on Christ, there will be a way through. And sometimes other people are the ones that help remind us of that. Sometimes you are the person that reminds others of that. You, oftentimes, are the helping hand of Christ that somebody needs to save them from drowning. You've done it before. You've probably done it this week. Maybe you didn't even realize it. Keep doing it. Keep reaching out. We're going to doubt. We're going to have times of little faith. <laughs> 2020 is a year where we're learning all about that, isn't it? It's just a crazy year. It's a crazy year, but we're getting through it. It's August, and we're still here, and we're still standing. Jesus is carrying us through, whether we realize it or not. We, of little faith, why do we doubt? Let us remind one another of the importance of our faith, of these hymns that we sing, of the songs in our hearts and the joy that God, even in these times, wants to let flow through us into the world. You're doing it now, whether you realize it or not. Let us lighten up in this time of COVID. Let us lighten up. The storm has passed. And yeah, there's a lot of work to do to clean up. There's a lot of work to do to clean up. But let us go forth with joy knowing that Christ will bring us through even this. Amen. Our closing hymn today 
is really all about that time in Scripture now at the end of this phrase where they got back on the boat. The wind ceased, the storm calmed and disappeared, and everything on the lake, the sea, is at peace. Jesus is in the boat with them. The disciples' souls are at peace. How can we find peace even in the midst of a storm? Our closing hymn talks a little bit about that. It's called, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And at the end, it says, And let it begin with me. It's number 431 in our hymnal. on earth and let it begin with each one of us keep your trust and your faith in christ go forward even in the midst of storms knowing that if you start to doubt and you feel like you're going to start sinking christ's hand is ready to grab you and rescue you and you will be christ's hand for someone else go forth in peace and love